En fait, ma vision, c'est « not all classrooms have, have four walls ». Donc, ça, c'était euh, notre forêt. Donc, euh, on commence ça. Puis, évidemment, comme je vous disais tout à l'heure, euh, rester dans sa zone de confort, pour moi, euh, c'est être dans mes vieilles pantoufles et en sortir, bien, c'est m'épanouir et vivre en tant qu'enseignante. Donc, ça, c'est notre petite euh, Forest Hill TV. Et euh, voilà. Alors, au tout début, c'est ce que ça a l'air. Ici, on a une grande uh, « It's our field ». So, now, it's uh, all the, the, the phys ed courses are, are there during winter. Uh, ça, c'est la forêt, uh, telle qu'elle était avant. Et uh, évidemment, what I was looking for in my vision, it's to, uh, uh, to bring out all the uh, learning outside. Pour moi, c'est important de ne pas juste prendre un cahier et de l'amener à l'extérieur, mais vraiment de se servir des euh, éléments de la nature pour euh, découvrir, pour faire des apprentissages, tout en collaborant, en euh, coopérant. Euh, donc ça, c'est au tout début, le petit pathway euh, dans la forêt. Et euh, évidemment, euh, ce qui, je, je, je passe vite au niveau euh, des diapositives parce que vous allez pouvoir euh, relire tout ça. Ce qui est important dans euh, l'enseignement le, le, à l'extérieur, c'est de leur montrer aussi euh, qu'ils sont capables de prendre des risques, d'être créatifs, euh, de partager, d'écouter, de collaborer. Donc, c'était très important euh, dans ma vision de cette euh, outdoor classroom. Donc, euh, et puis ce matin, j'ai parlé avec les enfants, c'est drôle, je leur ai montré. Et puis, ils étaient tout à fait d'accord avec euh, la la petite, euh, la diapo ici de Benjamin Franklin. Euh, donc, euh, c'est ça. Alors, une fois qu'on a euh, notre vision en tête, ce que j'ai fait, je me suis transformée en entrepreneur. Donc, j'ai essayé de voir euh, ce que je pouvais avoir euh, comme collaboration euh, avec la communauté, les travaux publics, euh, les parents, le home and school. Euh, je suis allée euh, cogner aux portes euh, pour avoir de l'aide, euh, puis au pire, bon, on se fait dire non, c'est pas grave. Euh, puis ce qui, au départ, m'allumait beaucoup, moi, ce que je voulais avoir, c'était la mode kitchen, euh, parce que quand j'étais petite, bien, je, je, je jouais dans la mode kitchen. Puis j ai, j ai, si vous demandez, if you asking to, uh, to my friend, uh, my te the teacher in my school, they will say, oh man, she was so intense with this project, you know. Anyway. So, donc, ça, c'est notre école. Les petites roches, euh, toutes les idées, euh, les idées étaient bonnes pour, euh, pour s'approprier l'extérieur. Donc, ça, c'est des petites idées qu'on a eues, mettre euh, des lettres sur les roches pour que les enfants puissent euh, s'en servir et euh, écrire euh, des mots. Et euh, ce qui est important, tout à l'heure, on parlait de, du respect de l'environnement. Euh, justement, dans, dans, quand on sort à l'extérieur, « We always say thanks to the nature ». Uh, and for me, I'm the one who's talking to the trees and trees for us, they need respect. And I truly believe that if we teach that to our kids, our students, they will grow uh, with respect and they will, they will make a difference uh, with uh, l'environnement. Alors, euh, quand on a fait, j'ai mis une petite diapositive parce que quand on a justement fait l'inauguration, on parlait de, de remercier les, euh, les, les Premières Nations. Donc, okay. c'était une façon pour euh, moi de leur faire, euh, de montrer aussi aux enfants l'importance de ce territoire-là et d'être capable d'en prendre soin. Alors, on commence la visite. Donc, dans notre forêt, on commence avec un petit pont. On a mis... Euh, on a mis un petit, euh, un petit tableau là, pour expliquer de quelle façon we need to be en harmonie dans, euh, la, dans la classe. And we just found that, you know, being, going together oftenly, uh, we just found that, you know, nature is the greatest teacher. The kids, um, they will stop, they will, uh, they will look the trees, they will hear songs, uh, look the birds, and, you know, they will learn from the natures. Alors, on a commencé avec euh, une structure. J'ai, uh, I work a lot with uh, des palettes de bois. It's not expensive, it's free. Uh, and I have a parents who deliver uh, les palettes de bois. And we just explore uh, how to build 
Ici, j'ai mis des, des morceaux de bois avec des euh, sticks in the, in, dans, dans la terre pour les, les faire tenir. Ça, c'est la forêt en hiver. Uh, we, with the COVID, I just decided to uh, build another spot. And I will say the, uh, the best uh, expense that we made, c'est le cabanon. We put everything inside and it's really easy, like everything is there. So you just go and grab what you need. Um, donc ça, c'est un espace uh, en face uh, devant le cabanon. Donc, and that, uh, I realized three, de, de le faire avec trois uh, planches de large. Uh, the kids, they can sit uh, crisscross, legs crisscross, and it's really easy. Uh, ils peuvent déposer leur, uh, leur veau. Uh, donc, ça sert de petite table en même temps. Donc, on a, we have another spot. So, it's the uh, picnic table from the Forest Hill uh, Home and School. Uh, so, you see, it's kindergarten. So, I asked my friend because we had uh, another uh, forest in front of the school. And, you know, we put, j'ai fait une autre structure. This is a yoga platform. Et the main goal, uh, yes, you're going outside, but it's not a play area, it's a learning area. And we were looking to integrate the six C's uh, in our uh, teaching. So here we have, and mindfulness, of course, it's really important in this, in the school, in class, we're doing the uh, la meditation, le yoga, and we have a beautiful place in the forest, the platform de yoga, qui coûte pas très cher à faire. Donc, uh, on peut parler, ça c'est des petites activités que je fais avec mes élèves. So the feelings books, you have rocks and they will talk uh, about their feelings. You can record them and it's tracked for the, the you know, the, 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 la progression des apprentissages. You don't need to do a big evaluation. C'est spontané. It's really busy, lend heart. Uh, and they were, I remember this time when they, they made that, they were so involved in collaboration. They were like, we're talking about deep learning. And believe me, being outside, you get the chance to, to, to touch that. Um, encore là, du recycling, c'était une vieille table qu'on a pris. And uh, ce qu'on ce qu a fait, c'est chaque enfant dans l'école a peinturé une petite roche, on est venu coller, it's part of the, you know, they're feeling a part of the, uh, the, the outdoor classroom. Alors là, c'est les enfants en pleine action. I love uh, play, um, uh, working with uh, frame, uh, with sticks. Uh, ça aide à délimiter leurs leur, uh, leur travaux. Um, la même chose aussi avec des moustiquaires, uh, des petits tapis verts. Uh, so when they're doing here, it's lens art, but where, when they're doing uh, maths, they can go uh, trouver des petites cocottes, des petites branches, and so ici, c'est ce qu'on a fait récemment. Uh, we made experience with the, uh, the painting. It was really cold and la peinture uh, gelait. So anyway, it was a, it's turned like, a, it's, this activity turns like a, a science uh, project. Alors, encore ici. Donc, euh, ici, c'est du euh, « loose parts », I will say, euh, avec la nature. Ici, on, on se sert beaucoup aussi de… On leur a demandé de… On leur a lu, en fait, un, un livre sur les Inukshuk. Et puis, après ça, ben, ils ont construit leur, euh, leur petit euh, Inukshuk. Ici, oups, ici c'est un… Encore là, c'est du recyclage. J'ai acheté un tableau. Euh, ils peuvent venir écrire. Ils peuvent venir faire de la peinture. C'est un autre petit coin. So, every, everywhere is a, a place to, to learn and to teach. Ça, c'est mon petit euh, nature euh, waving, I will say. Um, après ça, bon, dénombrement, on parle des… Uh, en first grade, we're doing les, uh, les suites. Les régularités. So, this is inside and this is outside. So, it's better to be outside learning. I never bring the cahier à l'extérieur. So, they were looking and they had so much fun doing that. La même chose ici, on s'est fait des petites roches, euh, les numéros, euh, les lettres de l'alphabet. Euh, donc, ici, c'est une activité aussi, c'est ce qu'on fait en première année. 
Donc, euh, ici, c'est on, on a acheté « I bought those rocks, but I made everything ». Ce que j'aime, c'est ce que je disais tout à l'heure, travailler sur des petits tapis verts. Euh, la même chose, moi, ce que je fais, I'm doing des uh, problèmes mathématiques, « every day, little story » in maths, and they need to illustrate their, uh, the story. And as you can see, they put la phrase mathématique, le petit dessin, and this one, this is so cute, it's two plus quatre. Égal 7, mais le 7 euh, à l'envers. Donc, euh, un peu, ben, en fait, c'est ce que l'enfant aurait fait dans son cahier en temps normal. Alors, euh, d'autres petites activités en mathématiques. Writing. So, sometimes it's hard to, you know, to think, oh, what about write, writing? And, you know, I just made, we had a tree with uh, des trous, and I just create un, un arbre au fait. And, you know, j'ai mis des, des petits bancs, de, de, des petits bancs de, de champignons. And, you know, they're, the kids are really involved. They're, they're writing, and this is the main goal. Um, looking, you know, looking for them uh, writing. Même chose ici. Et ça, c'est tous les petits endroits. Ici, on a mis sur... Euh, j'ai trouvé, en fait, euh, que de mettre une tablette sur le dessus des palettes. Euh, ça leur donnait un autre espace euh, pour pouvoir euh, écrire, pour pouvoir euh, travailler. On est allé, je suis allée récupérer beaucoup de morceaux de bois que j'ai intégrés euh, dans l'environnement. Ensuite, euh, going outside, euh, les tableaux blancs, having whiteboard, this is really cool, this is really easy. Uh, and also, I just bought that, I found that, and it's a, a You know, like a, a whiteboard, but you can, you know, say in form de, de, de petit morceau de bois. Uh, petit théâtre. So we start. The, you know, this is sometimes you make you make error, and you know when we build it, we thought that it will be bigger, but it's okay. I mean, they're grade one, grade two, so it's not too big, but they have so much fun. They, they create their own baguette magic like, like Harry Potter and they came and they, they talk about it and it was an oral presentation. So when we, we I love uh, bringing also uh, the iPad to record them, keeping track of their uh, learning outside and sometimes they will take the, uh, you know, the iPad, taking picture of nature, reflect and, you know, toutes les, les, les situations sont, euh, sont bonnes. Ensuite, ici, justement, dans le petit théâtre, euh, on a peinturé des, euh, des petites roches. Donc, les enfants viennent, euh, viennent piger euh, les petites roches. Ils inventent une histoire. Ils s'en vont euh, présenter euh, le tout dans le petit théâtre. Ensuite, on a fait, euh, on a fait un coin euh, musical. Donc, on a essayé de mettre euh, métallique, plastique, et bois. Les enfants s'amusent beaucoup euh, de ce côté-là au niveau du rythme. Euh, voilà. Alors, euh, petit côté, j'aime lire aussi parce que reading, you know, it's not all the kids who loves to, uh, you know, sometimes they, they want to have uh, quiet moments during recess. So normally we have, uh, we call it the crock leaf. It was, uh, it was one of my project uh, many years ago. And then we bring him uh, uh, le croc livre outside with full of books and the kids, they can go and read. Uh, also, uh, j'ai mis des, des petits pneus, they can play over there. We have another platform, so we can go outside and read uh, with them, yoga. Um, on utilise beaucoup aussi uh, tout ce qui est uh, littératie pour uh, créer uh, à l'extérieur des activités. Uh, for a still bus, So they love doing, uh, being on it. Uh, they will say, okay, let's go, Madame Sylvie. On s'en va à Walt Disney. They can read there. They can, uh, you know, play with le jeu du téléphone. And so they have, j'ai recyclé avec des palettes. Je suis allée chercher des chaises, des vieilles chaises qu'on avait. So it's all uh, homemade. Um, puis, bien évidemment, uh, tout ce qui est... Uh, tout ce qui est science commence souvent par la nature et on a réservé un coin pour un hôtel à insectes. Euh, juste pour vous donner une idée, souvent on pense que oui, ça peut coûter vraiment cher, que de, ça peut être dispendieux que de créer des, 
des environnements. Ici, cette table-là, elle a été faite avec des retails de bois. Elle ne nous a rien coûté. Et puis ça, ça nous sert justement à placer nos choses pour euh, des observations. Donc, les enfants s'en servent beaucoup. On a plein de petites tables comme ça, de petits endroits là, dans, dans la forêt. Et euh, mon objectif aussi, en faisant, en créant cet environnement-là, c'est important de « we need to be in harmony with the forest ». I went, I never cut a tree uh, in the forest. I went with the natural environment. And for me, it was really, really important to be respectful, to be in harmony with the nature. Oui, uh, il y a des structures, mais les structures ont été faites dans, uh, dans l'équilibre de, uh, de cet environnement-là et en respectant la nature. Ensuite, le coin des constructeurs, so this part, it, we call it uh, loose parts. Um, donc, loose parts, c'est les enfants s'amusent, euh, prennent des risques, euh, vont jouer avec des gros matériaux, donc avec des morceaux de bois, des pneus, euh, autant les filles que les garçons, des sacs de sable. And this part, I really want to, to make it bigger. Uh, vous voyez, ils font des structures, ils s'amusent encore là, ils collaborent, il y a de la, de la créativité, du leadership. Uh, oui, on peut dire, on peut peut-être penser que oui, avoir des pneus dans une cour d'école can be dangerous, mais les enfants uh, prennent des risques et puis ils voient ce qu'ils peuvent faire et ce qu'ils ne peuvent pas faire. So they, they are really involved in the process. Ici, pendant la COVID, ben, quand on est revenu, au mois de septembre, on se sert, ça c'est l'enseignant d'éducation physique, on se sert des pneus, euh, de tout ce qu'on trouve là pour pouvoir, euh, pour pouvoir enseigner. Alors voilà, c'est ce que ça a l'air euh, en hiver. Encore là, on a fait des tables avec des palettes. On a, euh, on a été très euh, créatifs en ce sens. Euh, cette année, le gros hit, ben, c'est les petites pelles. Évidemment, on est maternelle première, un, deux. Les pelles, les traîneaux. Euh, la mode kitchen, elle est ouverte l'hiver. Donc, euh, voilà, mode kitchen. Et euh, évidemment, mon, mon, mon défi, pas mon défi, mais my wish is to bring water. Because, you know, mode mod kitchen, I need to have uh, water. Alors, voilà, c'est ce que ça a l'air. Ici, on a refait une autre mode kitchen à la maternelle. On a peinturé des petites roches encore. Let's pretend that we will... Uh, on, on met la table, on mange des carottes, on mange des œufs. Les enfants sont vraiment, et encore là, euh, ça, peut être, euh, ça peut être une présentation orale, on les enregistre, ils pratiquent au niveau de leur oral parce qu'on est en immersion. Donc, euh, toutes les façons, euh, tous les moyens sont bons. Euh, donc, ici, station météo, encore là. Ce que j'ai fait, euh, ce fait comme erreur, c'est drôle, je regarde la station météo. Et ce que j'ai fait comme erreur la première fois, j'ai mis euh, la station météo plein soleil. Alors, euh, le thermomètre ben, était toujours à 50 euh, degrés Celsius. Alors, j'ai dû euh, changer de place. Donc, euh, oui, effectivement, des, des essais et des erreurs. On a fait aussi un banc euh, tout le tour d'un arbre. Donc, un autre endroit où les enfants peuvent, euh, peuvent s'asseoir, peuvent travailler. Euh, et là, euh, tout à l'heure, on parlait, euh, justement, il y avait des, des, des intervenants qui parlaient euh, euh, de la table, des potagers, gardening, and, you know, this part, uh, we, we are going, this is our next uh, project. Et ça, c'est un espace pour euh, les, pot les potagers de la forêt. Donc, on parle, euh, il y a mon coup de cœur. It's in French, but that's really good. I have a lot of uh, uh, really nice books in, uh, in English. Uh, for outdoor classroom, mais de l'école au jardin, ils ont beaucoup d'expérience, les jardins des patriotes. Uh, ça, c'est vraiment un, un livre euh, génial pour le jardinage en milieu scolaire. Uh, vous voyez, de plus près encore, les tables, euh, les tables de... Et oui, ce qu'on parlait aussi, on a parlé de « Ose entreprendre » et nous aussi, uh, « It was my... » Les projets d'entrepreneuriat scolaire, uh, « They give me a lot of money. » It's a good way to raise money. We're talking about uh, uh, home and school, uh, money from the school, but most of the money that are, it was involved on the, this project was from Ose Entreprendre and the home and school. And also, 
uh, we ask for collaboration. Oh, sorry. Okay, we have been good time uh, at school now. Uh, so we, you know, we ask for collaboration, neighborhood, uh, uh, we go everywhere and, you know, you have uh, always somebody who's willing to help or make donation. And ça, c'est ce qu'on a, on a le cabanon ici et l'intérieur, donc du cabanon, tous nos, nos uh, everything that we, we can borrow as a number and teacher, they can go uh, uh, on a schedule, uh, you know, and uh, borrow number 30. So we know that this teacher has uh, number 30, for example. Ici, ça, c'est un bon, un, bon, un bon achat, en fait, pour uh, ranger les choses. Euh, à l'extérieur, on met un cadenas et puis euh, à tous les jours, les enfants enlèvent le cadenas et puis les, euh, les objets, par exemple, euh, casserole pour euh, mode kitchen, ils se retrouvent euh, là-dedans. Euh, moi, pour ma part, when I go outside, I have all the time, I have une pochette. Euh, C'est ce qui se retrouve dans la pochette. Donc ici, petit contenant de pilule, it's really uh, helpful. You have a petit tapis de gazon, uh, you see a whiteboard. So this is in my pochette and the pochette, they are in the shed. So when we go outside, uh, the kids, they know uh, where it, uh, where all the stuff is. Ce qui est facile aussi, ben on demande au, uh, au contracteur qui pousse la neige, just put all the snow in one place. We have the les pelles, c'est organisé. So it's the kids who are responsible for that. Um, si on sait pas par où commencer, I will say just try to first of all, you know, look for where you want to go, uh, how you want to organize your space, and start with benches, table, just des petits bancs comme ça, uh, un seau. You put everything inside, and you know you're ready go to to work outside wherever you can. Um, si vous avez pas de forêt. Uh, this is an idea, so you can delimitate your uh, a part of your pavement and start over there. Je, and the most important thing uh, uh, for myself is to have a place to gather, gather, to be together, to establish a routine. And le plus souvent que vous allez à l'extérieur avec les enfants, ça devient une routine. Et puis ils sont ils sont habitués des no what um, what they will have to do outside. Um, Fondation Monique feeds back. It's in French, but also they're, they're really, they have a lot, a lot of resources about the uh, teaching outdoor. C'est uh, une fondation qui a été, Monique feeds back, a été impliquée dans tout ce qui est école Brentland, l'environnement. Et euh, vous allez trouver beaucoup de belles ressources. Et cette année, j'ai été honorée. J'ai reçu euh, un prix de la Fondation Monique Fitzback. Donc, si vous voulez aller voir l'entrevue, euh, c'est euh, sur cette page. Et puis, ben là, on s'amuse. Euh, je continue. J'envoie euh, des petites nouvelles de la forêt à mes profs. Uh, I want to... Everybody, actually, they're uh, looking to... You know, they're going outside. Uh, takes risk and uh, we help each other. Uh, on a commencé à bâtir des activités uh, un petit peu plus uh, concises, un petit peu plus précises uh, en travaillant sur les six C. Et ça, c'est, and next year will be part of, uh, it will be part of the uh, school success plan. So everybody will know that, you know, we teach outside uh, most of the time. And if you want to follow us, we have a web page. It's Forest uh, Junior Outdoor Classroom. Et si vous voulez avoir des idées, uh, création d'activités, partage d'idées, de l'aide, bien, mon adresse elle est là. And there is a superhero inside all of us. We just need the courage to put on the cape. And uh, ben c'est ça. Cette madame-là, elle me suit depuis le début. Alors, uh, this is it. Et il y a un colloque, c'est vrai, enseigné dehors, parce que Kelly, elle y est allée, elle pourra vous en parler, mais le colloque va être en fait en ligne, mais moi, je vous encourage fortement à y participer. 
Donc, voilà. All right. Um, so, I'm Kelly, and uh, I work at uh, Morn Heights Elementary, which is located in Morn Heights, uh, Quebec. So, we're, you know, in the, in the right outdoor place. And I've always uh, been extremely passionate about uh, the outdoors and sharing my experience, especially with uh, my students. So, um, where do you start? I think it helps that, uh, that you love being outside. I know for myself, uh, as a kid, I was always able to just play outside. And I think that's what's uh, really driven my passion. Um, uh, and now as an adult, and uh, I continue cross country skiing, uh, running, um, paddling, hiking, whatever it is. But all that to say that you don't need to be an outdoor person, but it, you know, it really just starts with getting outside, you know, just walking, just, you know, with your students, just take getting outside, going for a walk. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, I didn't always work at the school, but I had this fantastic opportunity to work at our school board's outdoor center, Arundel Nature and Science Center. Maybe one of your classes uh, were up there at some point, and uh, that's what my classroom looked like. It was pretty awesome. But in order to prepare for that, um, I had another amazing opportunity where I was shipped out to uh, Jasper Park for about a week. And uh, I had some amazing intensive training with Parks Canada at uh, their Palisade Center. And I literally got to follow around a uh, park ranger for seven days. And they brought you know, me into the local high school, the elementary schools that are there. And I really learned about how they do outdoor education, um, not just for uh, big excursions, but really on a day-to-day -day basis with the kids. So, you know, I learned a lot about uh, authentic teaching there. And then I was back at Arundel and uh, here um, I had to plan place-based lessons every day for kindergarten all the way up to sec five for special ed classes for CJEP groups and even for adults and these were experiential outdoor lessons so whatever we did it was outside so rain uh snow it didn't matter mosquitoes we were out there um and as you can see in the pictures there's you know geology pond study you know looking um at trees uh hiking um all of that and I, one thing that really struck me was always the comments that the children had to say, and, even, and of course the adults, um, many of them saying that they'd never walked in a forest or that they'd never sat in a green space. Or um, I remember one little boy, we were doing uh, geology and one of the kids looked down and he said, wow, I never realized that if I looked down and I dug a, a little bit, I'd actually find the rocks that we're talking about. And um, other kids, you know, I've never seen a, a fish swim before. Um, and what about these animal tracks? Does it mean an animal walked here? So all of this, uh, all of these comments really had me thinking about um, the importance of getting kids outside. And it doesn't have to be in a forest, although that was sort of my, my big experience. So when Arundel sort of uh, died down, there's uh, a lack of funding, I got back um, to the classroom. So I was shipped back here, and, you know, stuck uh, between my around four walls. And uh, then I was sort of like, now what do I do? Because I was so used to being outside, like, what do I do? So on my own, I kind of, you know, got um, some outdoor learning going and it really helped that uh, there was a senior's garden just outside uh, my window. And um, the seniors, I guess the school at the time that had just loaned out the property to the seniors, they were looking for a place to have a community garden. But none of the students were involved um, from our school. So got out there, met uh, some of the seniors in charge. And uh, then by the end of, um, uh, let's see, so, to, so I guess we helped them close off the garden and then we got to work with all of the seniors throughout uh, the winter time. They came in and shared their information about uh, gardening. And then by uh, springtime, we were all um, planting seeds in hopes of uh, helping to put some of these plants back into the garden. 
Um, in the meantime, the kids were keeping journals. They were writing about it. We brought in math. Um, they did research on the plants. So there was a lot of learning going on. This is, of course, now at the upper grade level, um, we have to respect all of the um, all of the teaching requirements. So that had uh, had me sort of thinking um, is what happened uh, the fall that that spring after everything was planted, the seniors, um, they kind of quit the garden. Um, many were older and they needed to retire and uh, the work was a bit too much. And for us to maintain that garden was really challenging because um, of course you need somebody there during the summer. And when you live uh, in the Laurentians, no one really lives very close. So um, that kind of, um, you know, grew over, but in the meantime, it certainly, you know, germinated some other ideas. So um, I started looking to some of my colleagues and said, you know, we really need to get something going. We have to get, you know, our kids outside and we have to, you know, get them to learn. So I guess we're a team of about four and um, we kind of sat down and uh, we said, you know, what could we do to make our students more environmentally uh, literal learners? And we wanted to integrate all of that learning um, into, into the curriculum so that it wouldn't just be an add-on. Oh, on Friday, we're just going to do this and with no connection to what they were doing. So we used uh, PDIG and we sat down, tore apart the curriculum and uh, tried to see where we could embed uh, different um, uh, learning opportunities from kindergarten all the way through to uh, grade six. Um, we also started looking at our community and that's uh, pretty much our community. It's all about, right, location, location, location. Uh, this is the ideal location, I have to say. Um, we've got everything, right? We've got the hiking trails, the, the aerobic corridor, lakes, rivers, streams, and in the winter, the cross country trails, um, you name it, it's here. But all that to say, I think that you need to look at your environment also, like what you know, what space do you have around you and really like pull back and have a look, you know, there must be some parks or some green spaces or even some neighbors that um, may have these beautiful gardens or a large uh, yard that uh, they wouldn't mind sharing with some of your students. Um, so we started looking um, at, at our community. We looked uh, to find out, you know, we had no money, uh, of course, we had lots of ideas. And uh, we just started um, pulling together. So the CLC um, with Learn the Community Learning Center helped um, us get going, having some community conversations. And uh, that was a fantastic opportunity to meet time, who had money. And uh, soon uh, my colleagues and I, uh, the four of us got some things going in terms of uh, Wild Wednesdays or Force Fridays where we did some authentic learning uh, that uh, was related to the curriculum. And then soon a couple of the other colleagues become, became curious and uh, they joined on. So something that we're um, already doing at our school uh, for the past, oh, I would say about 20 years, long before I came here, uh, they had um, a winter activity program. And of course you saw the, the um, GPS uh, photo there. Uh, or the satellite photo. Um, we're near the ski hills. We have skating rinks. We have a lot in our community. So the kids were already um, choosing sports in the wintertime once a week for uh, six weeks. So the kids got out there. So it was fantastic. And uh, it's something we still do every year, except for unfortunately this year we had to, uh, we couldn't do it. But um, we, the parents loved it. And of course, the students and even the teachers didn't mind is the teachers for some of them who weren't outdoor people, they got to, um, you know, go to the ski hill, maybe supervise some of the kids inside. But then the other teachers who really enjoyed being outdoors, well, we got to teach um, winter survival or cross country skiing or take the kids out snowshoeing and have some real practical lessons there. Um, but still, uh, my colleagues and I really felt that we had to find um, some uh, some real link to the curriculum. So we started um, by doing some groundwork. So we found that it would probably be a little too difficult to just jump right in. So uh, we identified 
for these um, activities, which I feel are really the groundwork if you're looking at getting your students outside starting tomorrow or day after spring break, um, taking students on a mini hike, an inventory hike, uh, maybe where you're collecting, um, uh, you know, having a look at what's in your community or even just in your schoolyard if you haven't left your schoolyard yet. Also having an opportunity to sit quietly and um, really take in what's around you. And then journal writing uh, was something it, and continues to be something that's really important for us. So these are four main things we try to encourage all of our teachers to do with, with the students here, just as a, as a starting point. So some of these mini hikes, I mean, you can find a variety of things. So even if you're just starting out and you're a little, a little worried about you know, what to do, I mean, the kids will, are so curious, they'll, they'll do all the work for you. Um, you know, give them some rulers, give them a notebook, iPad, um, you know, they're ready just to collect all that information. I mean, looking at, um, at a toad, uh, they start having all those questions relating to science, right? Uh, you know, how does it reproduce? Are these camouflage features? You know, where does it live? You know, what's with the roughness of the skin? How are they different from frogs? If you have spider webs, start talking about, you know, design. Um, and then, you know, you might come across a bunch of feathers and then you can start investigating, you know, was that, you know, a bird kill, um, you've got tracks. And even in the city, you can investigate some tracks. You know, there are, you know, maybe some raccoons or some other, you know, maybe some rodents walking around that are fun to investigate. So um, magnifying glasses and little, little jars to capture animals in, uh, certainly in the summer, of course, are, are great things to have on hand and we always uh, release. Hopefully not in the class. Um, so you don't have to be a biologist. And I think that's really important. You just have to be curious. So uh, another opportunity that we took to get our students outside is really contacting local, uh, local organizations is we have many that want to offer their services. And so we had a local uh, orienteering group that came, um, came to our school and we had opportunities to take the grades um, four, five, and six out on a regular basis. So they started with just mapping out the school and then they started making maps for other students. And then we went off to the woods, we walked over to uh, our local uh, hiking trails. And then in the winter time, we turned them loose. We actually went off somewhere and set them free. And uh, yes, they all came back. So that was a great opportunity to experience the outdoors. And at the same time, we're still addressing many uh, points of the curriculum. So uh, math, geography, and then when they come back, they write their, you know, about their experience. So, and of course, the communication, being able to um, you know, take a stand on what direction that uh, they would like to take in terms of finding their way to the next control. Um, we get to build relationship with nature. And I think that's really important. So getting out there often, and again, even if it's just a local park or your yard, um, even if there's one tree there, just getting outside, having them, you know, maybe doing sound maps where they're just trying to find the sounds of nature. And uh, after sitting, you know, maybe getting the students out for the first little bit is a little hard, um, but building up that, uh, that sustaining, um, those sustaining moments where the kids can actually sit for a little bit longer. And now our students, uh, certainly in grade four, five, and six, they can go out there and it's like 10 minutes, like, really, can we have another five? And that's really nice to hear. So that's uh, another great opportunity to um, take your students out. I know Sylvie mentioned about rain. Yes, we go walking in the rain. And what better way to come back and, and write a, you know, poetry, uh, do some poetry, poetry writing after the kids have walked in that, you know, that uh, wet rain, got their feet wet, because maybe some didn't have boots, uh, the smell of the rain, the sound of the rain. And this day was uh, just pouring rain. And I remember uh, another class was going to join us. They said, really, are you going out? Yes, we are. And the kids loved it. They wanted to go for a longer walk. Um, I mentioned before uh, quiet sitting. So that ties into mindfulness for us. And um, we do a lot of mindfulness at our school. 
and we had a wonderful opportunity to have a mindfulness in the forest. And we actually found a local person who came and donated their time and took each group out to do a six week session on mindfulness. And um, so that's, that was a wonderful um, opportunity again, to have the students get out there. They learn about social emotional learning um, and it taps into self-regulation techniques, all the things that are built into our ABA uh, programs. Um, then for uh, um, language arts, often uh, throughout the school year, I know that both myself and another colleague, we try and have at least two opportunities to read books that have to do, uh, that are nature-based. And uh, actually we just finished uh, a book club where students got to choose um, one of four books and um, do some reading and uh, various activities uh, related to the outdoors. So bringing the outdoors in and then getting back outside, it's really interesting to hear how they make those connections. So yes, we still have to do all of the, all that rich writing. So we do that. And um, I find it's really interesting once you've been outside, uh, they keep actually a book of, um, of words uh, that they collect while we're out on walks. And it's so beautiful to see that in their writing. So here are just a sample of some of the books that uh, we were reading recently. Um, so other opportunities to get out, uh, pond life, I and mean, we're lucky we have a little creek on our, proper, on our school property. So the children can get in there and collect some samples and then we can come in and have a look at uh, what they find uh, using a digital microscope um, and uh, mini laptops, iPads as well. Um, same with uh, geology, we can have opportunities to um, investigate and bring those samples in and, and have a look. Uh, we just recently uh, did this snowshoe map and science. So we we're out on a snowshoe expedition and we found different tracks and that led us to start talking about how animals um, move around in the winter time. And that had some students sort of questioning things and uh, about pressure. And uh, lo and behold, that was part of our science. So it was an excellent opportunity to weave in pressure, mass distribution, displacement, flotation. Um, the students had to calculate their, um, their, the area of their foot and then they had to do some multiplicate, they had to do some calculations for their student mass. And then from there, they had to use that to design a snowshoe of their choice. So actually today was the day we got out. I, it was too late for me to throw in those pictures or even the video. And they were having a, one heck of a time trying out their snowshoes. And um, some were very successful and others are eager to, they'll be making a new design over the, over the break. So that was a lot of fun. So these are a lot of sort of uh, smaller activities, um, but every year we try and uh, dive into a really big project. So here, um, this groundwork has all been laid, right? Um, you, we've been bringing the kids out, we've been doing micro hikes, we've been doing the quiet set, uh, sitting. So they really have a great understanding of what it is to be outside and also like what's around them. So when we start talking about some of some projects that we're thinking about, um, usually I usually sort of set the theme, otherwise they're everywhere. So this was one that we did on water. So this was not last spring because that was COVID time the spring before that. And um, what we did is um, we had this fantastic project. So the students at the time, there was a lot of flooding and in the Laurentians, um, we have uh, water is uh, a real preci precious resource because we have uh, threats with invasive species, uh, blue-green algae, um, and also a lot of other uh, development issues. And many of us get our water um, from, you know, from these sources. So either from wells or they, we draw drinking water from it. So the children really had a firsthand understanding of how important it was. So the students started um, thinking about what are some of the different problems. So they actually wrote letters to the town and uh, asking what problems they, they had. So they were making a link with the community um, and they had invited different experts in. 
So the students, um, as I mentioned, wrote emails. We had uh, the public works department come in and speak to the class, showing all the areas of difficulty. And many of the students were saying, hey, that's my, you know, that's where I live. That's, that's what my dad was talking about, and so on. And it was really great for them to make that connection. Um, so the students, uh, we went out and we visited again, all of these water sources, they collected water um, and they were really using the inquiry model to help them shape some of the questions that they wanted to answer. Um, and eventually they had to delve down to one question that they were, was going to be their project. Um, so some of them uh, started making uh, water filters. They were collecting water from all these sources. It was uh, really great to see um, all, that, uh, all that research taking place. So the back part is like where the teacher, you know, so we're following them along, but we have to teach them all those other skills, which are all part of the QP, of course. We have to teach them how to do proper research. We have to teach them how to write. Um, there's some mapping skills, um, how to speak to other people, et cetera. Um, and so we're addressing the curriculum and we have evidence of student learning. So that was really great. And then at the end, the students got to put all this information together and then we invited the community in and uh, they were really surprised. Some made even pamphlets to hand out to the different citizens. So we found out what the problems were. The children investigated some possible solutions and then shared it with the community. So there was the outdoor learning uh, for a purpose. Um, all that led us uh, to create. Kelly, outdoor... just a time check. Um, we Perfect. have about five minutes. Great. Five minutes. I'll wrap it up. Um, so here, uh, we also uh, had a great opportunity to build an um, uh, outdoor classroom. So we have um, we had a local fellow come in, and he was passionate about the outdoors. He said, "I have a vision," and he. He said, don't worry about the money. We came in and he just re-landscaped it. We had the rocks donated to us for our, from, our, um, from the um, sitting area. We had plants donated. It was just fantastic. So now the kids have a real area where they can. So we even have um, uh, a little structure here that was built by some former students. So it was, it's great. And it's still a work in progress. But now we have an area to come and, and learn from. So here are just some other ideas of uh, possible activities, you know, anything you can think of really, um, just getting the students out at any opportunity that you have. So just because it, you, we can move away from those worksheets and we can just take it outside. It's so much richer when the kids get out there. And again, um, it's not all about learning. You have to have some games in there too. So sometimes we do a lot of experiential uh, learning cooperative games and uh, the students, uh, have a lot of fun and learn how to be with each other. We incorporate technology, as you can see. Um, also the webcams, you can even use those in the city and uh, capture something. It's a great way to see um, the food chain in action sometimes. And maybe a couple of challenges. Uh, it's not all rosy. Um, sometimes it's really hard to get uh, staff on board. Um, it, we have a high turnover at our school of teachers, many move up uh, to take a, a job. And then once they, they have their post, they'll transfer down uh, to the city. So we have a high turnover. We also have had four uh, different principals in the past five years. So it's been a little challenging to keep, um, you know, certain, you know, the staff moving, but there are just a couple of us that are, that are involved now, but we're hoping that's going to grow. And I think a lot has to do with COVID. Um, other problems, uh, we do have some staff that are really worried about being outdoors. You know, it's not their thing. They're, you know, they're, they don't like uh, being outside or they're, you know, um, worried about not meeting the requirements of the curriculum. So that's another um, a problem, but it can be overcome. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, but we do have our governing board involved. Which is, which is great. Um, and uh, so that has driven that forward. Uh, sorry, we pair our, um, sorry, just going back a bit, the pairing our classes for outdoor learning. So sometimes we'll invite another teacher to come with us and then they get to see what it's like. And then sometimes they'll try and go out on their own. Um, 
So where do we go for help? Uh, we're really, um, we have so many uh, people in our town, many retired persons. So they're geologists or artists or biologists. So we call on them and they're so eager to help us out. Uh, of course, our town is uh, so supportive. We get a lot of funding from them. Um, they've helped us uh, with the outdoor classroom and other organizations um, are there to uh, provide us with some grants, grant money. So where are we today? Um, I would say that um, we are, um, our school WILD project has been written in our mission statement, which is fantastic. Uh, it's in our educational project, our school success plan, as well as our AB, AB program. So it's really making sure that it's still there. So even if things are um, not really happening right now for all teachers, I know that it'll come back once we get through this uh, pandemic. So that's, um, uh, that's what we're, we're doing. Sorry to rush. Also with the students, um, our kids know that uh, they have a backpack. They, they carry everything with them. They know they have extra clothes here at school. We have an open permission slip. To, for students to leave the school property at uh, any time to visit the community. So that saves us on having to send out emails every time we wanna go out and do something or leave the property. 